Hello there, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are going to see how to add Tailwind to your ABP Blazor UI application. Now, if you are someone like me who uses Tailwind as a main CSS framework instead of Bootstrap, uh, using it with ABP is a pain right now because all the components are written in Bootstrap. We will see how to not affect those existing components and still use Tailwind uh, in an effective way uh, in the Blazor UI app. Let's get started. As always, I have created the blog post um, and we are going to follow that blog post. The first step is to create a Blazor uh, app. I will copy this and then I will paste it here. This will create a Blazor application for me. Okay, once our application is created, we can do the normal things like running the migration and running the API project. Let's go and run the migration first. For some reason, terminal is not opening. I will run .NET run. This will run the migration, do all the setup for us, see the database, things like that. Okay, our migration is successful. Uh, we can close this now. So for Blazor project, we also need to run the host. First, run the host, .NET run. This will set up the API server so that we can run the Blazor application. Okay, we have our API running and let's go and run our Blazor app. Okay, our Blazor app is running as well. Yeah, so now as you can see, the default UI framework is Blazor. Sorry, not Blazor, Bootstrap. And you can find Bootstrap components all over the uh, UI. So let's see how to first add Tailwind to your project. The first step is stop the uh, Blazor UI. Maybe I will link here so that it's easy to. And then uh, if you see that uh, we have a source folder and then you go inside the source folder, you will have the Blazor project here. So let's navigate to that Blazor project. Okay, now we are inside the Blazor project and let's see the next step. The next step is to install the required packages. Uh, so no, the first is to initialize NPM. So let's initialize the NPM. I will zoom in a little bit. Okay, we have NPM in it, yes. This will initialize a default uh, NPM package.json. You can see that uh, the scripts are empty. Basically everything else is empty. Uh, you just want the empty um, package.json so that we can install our packages. The packages are Tailwind CSS, Post CSS, and Auto Prefixer. And you can see that I am actually installing them as a developer dependency with the slash D here. And once that is done, install the Tailwind CSS configs. So you have a init command along with post CSS here. That means it will initialize Tailwind also along with post CSS. Uh, just go come and check out what these are. So this is the Tailwind config. Um, and in the Tailwind config, you can see a content section, theme section, and the plugin section. We have to modify this because we have to remove the base classes in the Tailwind because we are using the base classes from the Bootstrap. So let's uh, go and update that. And also we have to update the content section to tell Tailwind, hey, where is the CSS available? So first update the contents. And then the next is core plugins. And, and the last one is prefix so the core plugins is uh where we are disabling the pre-flight pre-flights are the base themes for the css like tailwind works based on uh its own framework so it will disable all the base css comes which comes pre predefined for h1 h2 so everything is um, tailwind will remove it so when you say pre-flight false it ignores all that um, classes. And then we are mentioning a preview. So um, to keep the conflict slow and to make sure there is no conflict with Bootstrap, we are going to prefix all the Tailwind CSS with TW dash. This way we can be sure that uh, the current CSS which you have written with Bootstrap will not be affected. Okay, the next step is to create um, CSS files. So one is the input CSS and the other one is the output CSS. So we basically we need to create two tailwind.css files. The first one will go inside the styles 
uh, directory so let's come and then in the root of the blazor app create a style and then create another file called tailwind now let's do the same inside the wwf ww root so in the ww root i have a tailwind and in the styles i have a tailwind so right now both of them are empty uh, so this will be the input and this this will be the output and let's update the scripts the scripts are in the package.json so here i will come and then update the scripts okay so the first is to build the css in the dev format and then second is to build it on the release format and then the third is to watch so what is going on here is uh, we are using a tailwind cli using the tailwind config and then the post css config and we are saying here the input file is the tailwind from the style and the output file is ww root tailwind css so basically we are just telling the tailwind hey use this config and use this as an input file and then generate the output file inside ww root and tailwind css once that is done um, we are also adding a release which basically adds a mini five um so that the output is minified and then the watch adds a watch flag so that uh, the tailwind cli watches for all the changes happening in the content section inside the tailwind so this is the content section so it will watch for all the changes happening in the razor and html and then keep updating them keep updating the output file so once that is done let's uh, go and update the index page index page is where the css are added to the blazor web app so here we are adding css tailwind css as a style sheet here uh, as i said it's still empty but we are setting up and now we have to update the css project so why are we doing this is to um, build the css before the compile happens so how tailwind works is that it will check your um, pages so it will go and check all the all the content here in the razor and html pages and then create the C create the css only for the required css so it's not bootstrap so if you come and see here in the global bootstrap it just dumps all the css but we are not going to use all these css tailwind tailwind one will only create the css which you are actually using so that when you do build um you will have very minimal css uh, available for you and we are not dumping all the entire css uh, even though we are not using anything um okay so just copy this target and then update the css proj okay so in the css proj we are saying uh run the build dev while the configuration is debug if the configuration is released we are saying do a minified version with release okay once these two are done we are actually ready to run the app so let's run the app and then see what happens we yeah, will run it from on the outside dotnet watch okay here you can see the build has been done so uh, the A abp tailwind uh, is doing this npx which is what we mentioned um in the build step and now we have our app running but still we don't have anything changed because we have not applied the css yet so let's close that and you can come and then see the styles it's still empty and then here it's also empty so here we are first going to add the tailwind css which are necessary so we are going to add the tailwind components and utilities as inputs in the styles tailwind now let's go and run the dotnet watch again um this time it will again look for this uh, tailwind css but again we didn't apply any tailwind css so it will not generate so let's go and apply some tailwind uh, css so as i said let's come and apply add a tw prefix so you i have um tailwind vs code extension installed so the tailwind vs code extensions know the tailwind config so it automatically creates autocomplete for you 
and uh, it knows that there is a prefix available. So it added the TW dash prefix for you. Now I will change the background color to gray and then I will add background color gray 400. So we have added this background color and this is the CSS for it. You can actually see it in place. Now let's see what happens when we rebuild our project again. Okay, now dot not watch. The tailwind is building again. Now I will come and see what's going on. See, the background is applied. Let's go back and see what is the generated CSS. So come here and then see the tailwind. This is what we added and the generated the output of the tailwind will be available in tailwind.css here. And this is what we have generated for now. But when you are in .NET Watch, uh, you can actually come and then add, ah, okay, I don't want it free. And your .NET Watch will say no hot reload changes to apply. Just click uh, rebuild and you have a new rebuild happening and a new background applied. But this is not very efficient in the way that you, you don't want to rebuild every time you want to um, change the uh, color. So if I, if I change it to um, six, you can see that the um, tailwind was the, the dot not watch updated the updated the page, but the tailwind has not. So if I do dot net 200, we have done that, but nothing changed. The CSS didn't change. It's the same. Like I will change again, but nothing changed. You can totally see that the dot net watch is still at 300. So there is no changes to apply. Just rebuild. Yeah. Now you can see that it's happening faster. Yeah. So you are making a lot of changes and you want to see the um, changes right away. That is when you should use this um, npm watch command. So this um, this will watch for all the changes and rebuild the um, package, uh, rebuild the output every time. So you can come and see that uh, in the um, Tailwind CSS you have 400 because your um, in your razor you have mentioned 400 let's say you changed it to 500 the rebuild already happened and then you could come here and then it added the 500 as well and let's say you added uh 600 and then it again it will add 600 as well so uh, if you are playing around and then seeing like okay i want to see how this looks and that looks uh you can use dotnet watch to keep updating that um or you can actually leave it to the build because if you are using visual studio uh the build command every time you run it the build will kick in and then automatically updates your update your css yes um yeah this that's it for this video uh hope you liked it uh, if you are someone like me who struggled with uh, designing the abp with tailwind css i hope you would find it useful uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you will get notified um, on future contents. Um, yeah, that's it from me. Uh, see you soon in another video. Bye-bye.